It's too close, man. It's too close. Too close. Yeah, too close, man. It's too close. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Just Grow Show, episode one. Uh, it's been a long time coming. We've been working on this bitch for a minute. Uh, yes. I am your co-host, Dr. J, a.k.a. Mr. Relatable, a.k.a. I'm just here to do some shit. And to the left of me. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Nightwalker. So, um, Sohan Grover, you know, nice to meet you guys. I'm a music producer and just like sound engineer and whatnot, just... Yeah, it's just been coming a long time now, right? Yeah, yeah, man. It's um, it's one of them situations where it's like you constantly are working on something and you want to kind of like find other methods to kind of get information out. And it's like, oh, you know what? Like, let's go ahead and get this shit going. I feel like this setup is, was such a bitch to make. It's morning. like, it's, it's so simple. <laughs> it's, it's so simple. It's so it's simple, so but it's so annoying. It's just the most tedious looking shit ever. You know, mics everywhere, lights everywhere. Wires and shit. You know, fucking, it gives me a headache just looking at this yeah, shit. Yeah, turn down, turn off the HVAC so it's not like popping on and shit. It's hot as fuck in here. It's hot as fuck in here, bro. <laughs> That's the first thing I know is I'm like, bro, I need to take this hoodie off, but I'd be shirtless at that point. The audience is not you ready for that. You coming outside with just a hoodie and no shirt. Hey, hey, man, that's an Edgewater shit. Like, you just be out on the beach like this. So. Oh, dude. But no, uh, so uh, like I said, this is uh, our first episode, our pilot, if you will. Um, so we just kind of wanted to give you guys more so of a breakdown of just some of the things that we do, some of the things that we deal with as content creators, producers, engineers, and things like that. Kind of give you some of the, some tips and tricks that we have and just kind of give you like a walkthrough of just, you know, how we do the shit. You know, you may be a little bit bigger than us, a little bit smaller than us, but I think everybody can kind of get some kind of information where we can just kind of share and uh, just grow from the shit. Just grow, baby. Just grow. <laughs> so first off, so what is, let's, let's explain to the audience. What is just grow? Oh, I think just grow for me is just never ending discovery, to be honest with you. Just basically, you know, in an art form, you know, just discovering new ways about going shit, just discovering new things in life, reporting the shit in an art form, you know, like uh, new sounds to explore, new new things to like just push the envelope kind of thing. And also being true to yourself to be able to do that to me, you know, like, you know, Creating sounds from scratch, all that kind of shit, you know, especially musically, you know, like, you know, just just a vibe, to be honest with you, went in the growth. So. Yeah, I feel like uh, when we first started this, it was kind of like that where it was we were both kind of doing our own thing. You were doing a lot of your uh, producing on your end and kind of like pushing shit out. I was doing like a lot of rapping shit. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of went to bleed over a little bit towards your end with a little bit more producing just because it's hard as fuck to find like a good consistent producer. Sorry, producers. God damn, your <laughs> your your production was amazing. Bro, his first few beats, I was like, well, what the fuck? But that comes from that drumming background, to be honest with you, bro. Yeah, your your drums were on that, on that band shit. Like if you if you have any type of like band background, mm -hmm. like getting like utilize that shit. It's a it's a thing. I feel like people only focus on like just oh, I, I did drums or I did such and such. Like I play <laughs> trumpet, bro. That shit's helpful. <laughs> Bro, it's because, like, you know the rhythms, you know, you know all that polyrhythms, all that type of shit, right? Producers don't know any of that shit, right? Yeah, my like, friend, now, especially nowadays, where it's like you just, you have a lot more people just kind of get into it as a hobby. And it's not nothing, it's nothing wrong with that, but you kind of see that there is a, a lacking of, like, that general skill set. I, I actually have something wrong with that, to be honest with you. How so? Because, like, if it's a hobby, right, a lot of people say it's a hobby, but they be capping. You know, like what in a way, mean? like, for example, if it's a hobby, it's just for fun, right? You're not really doing anything with it, right? Mm -hmm. But if like Kendrick calls, com comes calling tomorrow, you got 100 beats on deck to se send out like a professional, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you capping now, huh? Right. <laughs> nah, no, it's, um, it's like, for me, I kind of feel like when people start producing 
um, when they just like first start off, especially if it's something that you're not doing when you're like super young, mm -hmm. it's, I feel like nowadays it's really done because people want to try to like get bread out of it. Like, I don't think it's too many people that just get into like producing now to because they just like making music. I mm -hmm. think they do it as like, oh, this is a side hustle type shit. Yes. And you can kind of tell by how like mass produced uh, some of the shit is mm -hmm. there. And then I want to say like back in the day, like you had you had sample packs and shit, but not to the extent of where it's at now, where everything is a sample pack. Your, enti your entire drum selection is a sample. Your mm -hmm. entire like literally all you're doing is just picking and choosing certain sh certain shit from a software, putting it together and that's it. There's no there's no originality to it whatsoever. It's mm -hmm. like people do that because that's how you can kind of ship that stuff out. Mm -hmm. But when you actually sit down and take the time to, you know, pad out your drums, when you take the time to piece together a, a, a chord or something like that or fuck around with a melody and it's like, okay, now this is something that's more personal mm -hmm. and maybe it doesn't sound as smooth or as on... On beat is something that if you just pulled samples and just linked it up with the BPM, that's it. But it is something that's a lot more original than the shit that you're just pulling straight up from wherever you're getting your samples from. Right. No, I absolutely agree. Like, the thing is, though, is that, like, like, the loops and everything, for me, right, it's like, there's two ways about going with it, right? A lot, of, like, the majority of producers nowadays that I've seen, right, will just put two loops together and that's it, right? Yeah. I mean, nothing wrong with it, but I mean, what kind of, what kind of joy do you get out of that? To be honest with you, I, I don't find any like, like actual fun. Everybody's like, I, I don't make beats for fun. Then why you do this shit for? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't get that uh, yeah. point. Like, I don't yeah. get that part. Like, so what the fuck are you doing? Like, that is that shit not fun? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you know what? The fucked up part is too. It's like, and then it fucks up the skill gap too, because mm -hmm. it's like. If you have somebody that's not really using loops heavy like that and they're just starting off, mm -hmm. they could be fucking three, four years into the shit and have a particular sound. You could have somebody that just start off and then two months later, because they're using those loops, they're like the sound quality is about the fucking same. The only difference is just like how well it's mixed. And then even with that, you got AI mixing the fuck out of some shit where it's like, ah, that's that's passable as fuck. Mm -hmm. Especially for, like, a, a YouTube producer. Yeah, definitely. They're making type beats. Now, like, I feel like loops are for type B producers, which is, I mean, to be honest with you, my opinion about loop producers is I'm not hating. It's just that, like, it's like, okay, do your thing. I understand what you're on, right? But at the same time, right, just use it as a weapon as, as, as to just putting it together. You yeah. know, like, you know, like if you're going to make something, right, chop it up, you know, do do some other shit with it, transpose it, put put shaper box on it, do some glitches. There's plenty of things you could do to those kind of samples. Or you can create something from scratch and just add a loop to it. Yeah. That's how you use it as a weapon. And that's fine because that's, you know, that transforms your music to another level. That's fine. But like, if you're just putting, taking a loop, taking a drum loop, putting it together, it's like, bro, why? Like, this, this is crazy. And it happens way more than it should be. And I also feel like, and the YouTube's, you know, like there's so many, so many tutorials out there. It's yeah. like so oversaturated with tutorials. I know when I was first starting, right? Like there's only a few guys doing tutorials, but like, I was just pushing buttons to be honest with you. Yeah, like yeah. I I only watched the tutorials to navigate Ableton, which is the DAW that I use, right? Mm -hmm. And because I didn't know how to use Ableton, that's fine. I mean, I didn't have a manual at the time either. So it's like, okay, cool. I'll just watch some YouTube to see how to navigate it. But as soon as I knew how to navigate it, then I started like, okay, I need a drum kit. Okay, go to Reddit, get a drum kit, cool. I need some sounds. Okay, buy a synth. My first synth was massive yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Well, now no one uses massive. It's crazy, you know? And then, like, you know, just play with sounds and push buttons. That's all I did, you know? Now it's so fucking easy, bro. It's so easy, but it's, like, also at the same time, it's just a loss. It's a loss, loss it's, art. It's a super loss art, and I feel like you can, like I say, you can tell that just by some of the originality with it. Um, me and my guys, though, whenever we're looking for beats, it's just 
it's the most impossible fucking thing because it's like <laughs> everything is the same exact damn thing mm -hmm. and there's no there's no build up in the beats there's no flip of the beats mm -hmm. it's just all just you 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 have the, the hack is to not have a tight beat now the hack is to look for something that's not a tight beat anymore mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down Ooh, to oh that's a gem yeah that's a gem it's like if you if you if you can get out that box of a tight beat and just find like the the vibe of the beat you generally find like more quality beats i don't know why that is i think more so just because like you said those tight beats are a lot of loops i think when you look for like dark boom bap type beat like you'll get something that's a little bit more a little more original than like mf doom type beat you know what i'm saying so i mean you kind of run into that yeah um but just to kind of like pivot from that and kind of get back to where we're talking about the shit that we're doing because we already should know people and we <laughs> we got to shit on ourselves first <laughs> uh -huh. but not like um I think when we when we first started just grow the idea was just to kind of have like some have your beats go on some shit. Mm -hmm. I was making like uh trippy videos back then. I was doing a lot of like memes and shit and I was having a lot of fun just kind of like piecing shit together. Mm -hmm. Um so like taking taking a scene from SpongeBob and throwing it into some Dragon Ball Z type shit. Like that was super fun for me. Mm -hmm. So kind of like throwing the music in there was the next step. And then we went from like making it primarily just like AMVs to just more trippy shit that just kind of matches your vibe of things. Mm -hmm. And then the next growth was me making some shit out of GarageBand and then mm -hmm. eventually going over to Logic. And it mm -hmm. was also you adding in some of your own videos as well. Cause you already like dabbling into that shit as well. Yeah, I was dabbling into the videos. Uh, mainly your videos inspired me to try to like get into it myself, you know, like, mm -hmm. and specifically that style too, because I was like, man, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest with you, where you were like cut the thing, like in a kind of like a uh, movie theater esque thing where it's like horizontal in the middle, yeah. and then like two vertical, you know, like GIFs between the two Man, right? I, got, I got that like primarily from like hype williams like, oh those old shit videos, like all that shit that he did with like pharrell <laughs> or whatnot i didn't actually know that to yeah, be honest with you that's yeah. where that's where i really pulled it from because he would have he would have like two different videos going on uh, in the black screen and one video going on in the middle and it's like it's crazy it's crazy that makes sense now <laughs> i don't see a lot of people do that shit though no nah. no nah, i don't see a lot of people do it and i feel like I, I I don't know the last time I seen the fucking hype Williams video. I don't even know if he fucking still makes videos. I don't. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does, but that's just been taken over by Lyrical Lemonade at this point. Yeah, like it's yeah. crazy. But yeah, no, I've man, now I know where that shit came from now. But it's like, yeah, bro, like I was just doing that shit, and bro, like you know, it's it's fun to make those type of videos. Now I'm not gonna cap to you, right? Making videos is not my most favorite thing to do i think i've expressed that to justin quite a bit yeah. I, I i really hate making videos and yeah. funny enough like i've also the things you hate the most also you get like requested the most like i'll like <laughs> i'll like no one re like people will request beats for me of course you know and that's fine right but they'll be like hey bro can you make a video for this shit because your videos are cool i'm like bro i fucking hate videos stop <laughs> Stop telling me this shit. Like, you know, I'll make this beat for you. You know, but like, bro, like, I don't want to make this video. And then uh, they'll hit me up like, where's the video at? Well, where's the paycheck at? To be honest with you, because I'm not trying to like do everything for free. God damn, you know? <laughs> we'll take that as the next segue. Yeah. So like, when we first started, we definitely were in the spot of just like trying to bring value to everybody so it's like we have a friend that's making making a, a song or some shit like that and they reach out and they want us to make a video like we had to do that shit but over time it was like damn bro like this this shit takes a lot of time to do um and i think like the videos that we were giving to them as well was like pretty unique mm -hmm. um a little bit more outside of what the your general music video looked like back in you know mm -hmm. like the 20 was it 2019 20 2018, 2019 something like that shit. yeah something like that yeah so um i mean definitely one of the things that i'd pass on to anybody that's kind of looking into shit is to like properly value yourself um 
I, I think people nowadays go through a route where instead of like properly valuing themselves, they owe either completely overvalue themselves or completely undervalue themselves. And that comes from the point of like, oh, I'm going to, yeah, I, I can make a beat for you for free, or I can make a beat for you for $200. And it's like, especially when you have somebody that's just starting, it just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to do either. You know, like your shit's not worth $200. Maybe to you it is, but you're going to have a lot of trouble finding somebody that values the shit that you're making at 200, 250. You know what I'm saying? Same I absolutely agree. Yeah, 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 like same thing with the videos and shit too. It's like their cinematography is expensive as fuck. But if mm -hmm. you're just starting and you may, even if you have the equipment, it's like, why do you feel like you have the ability to charge somebody $500 for some shit that you don't even professionally know how to do yourself? Right. So it's like, you don't want to overvalue yourself because at the end of the day, like if you build relationships with people, especially if it's somebody that you actually want to work with, like just charge them some fair shit. Like I know so many people where even if they want to give me some shit for free, like I at least put up like I'm gonna give you a dub for the shit type thing. And it's it's just to show like respect and appreciation of somebody else's craft. And it's also kind of like, hey, like, respect your shit as well. Like, when you first start off making uh, beats, like, your trackouts, I don't, I don't know, like, if you changed anything at all. So, but I'm like, I, I feel like your trackouts wasn't $175 when you first started. Nah, like, I mean, to be honest with you, it's different for each person also based on relationship for me. Uh -huh. You know, like, uh, yeah. You know, like, if I don't know you, I'll ask you what your budget is, but I'll know if you're a fuckface right away if you don't even know what your budget is. And there's some people I just won't work with, like, with that, because it's like, bro, it's just going to be trouble down the line, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, if I could work within your budget and it's fair, you know, then, like, you know, I, you know, I'll have, I'll be able to negotiate with you, right? Yeah. If it's someone that I know, like, you know, just throw me a dub, throw me 25, throw me 30 something. That'd be cool. Right. But like, you know, if we working on some shit and I know that like uh, you're going to be putting money into other things, like, for example, if you're going to be putting it into marketing, right, if you're going to be putting it into like Facebook ads or you're going to be doing it like on YouTube ads or pl a Spotify playlist. Right. All right. Cool. Don't worry about paying me. Give me my producer creds. All right. And get me in the back end type thing. Yeah. You know, I just want my points, to be honest with you, you know, and because like at that point, if I know you, you're putting it up and you actually putting more money towards it. Use that money because we're working together. Use that money to put you on. Right. And if you put yourself on, it, we could get put on. That's how I see it. You know, so yeah. I always try to see also like what other other uh, artists are doing in terms of like. You know, like, I get that you want to buy the beat, but, like, I actually genuinely care about your fucking career. So, like, I want to see if you're putting some effort into marketing yourself because I want to work with people who want to, like, get heard and want to build a business around their own art, you know, becoming an artist or, like, build, building their own brand. I want to build with those people. I don't right. want to just sell you a $25 beat and fuck off. You know, it just it does nothing for me does nothing for you and it's a waste of time in my opinion so yeah and that's, i mean that's that's kind of how it comes across nowadays too um you either run into people who are like very wishy-washy with how they want to do their work mm -hmm. um so the point where they just buy some shit do whatever make some shit maybe not even even record off of it you got the other folks that just won't buy shit at all mm -hmm. and then uh you have those other folks that are like really on top of their shit and it this the the music game don't work out for everybody but you put yourself in a better spot and better situation if you're prepared organized and you're conducting business as if it is a business yeah no absolutely you know you have to like you know see what's in the back end of things and that's why a lot of people forget about that so yeah yeah, so. All right. So next topic, one of the things that we kind of wanted to go over on our end was. Uh... The rain 
in the snow. I got the funky flow, but now I really got to go. In the rain or in the snow, I got the funky flow. In the rain or in the snow, I got the funky flow. Rap of the Rapper, great new music video game. In the rain or in the snow. Once you played it, you can't get it out of your head. Call it over there, we'll bring you luck, so give up. I got no time to spear. Let's go over just uh, what kind of genres are we operating out of on our own? And I know when we first started, like, you would just hit me with a gang of shit that I've never fucking heard of. <laughs> I want to say, like, 20, like I said, like, 2019, you was talking about some vaporwave shit. I'm like, what the fuck is that, bro? <laughs> and all I'm seeing is just, like, purple shit, pink shit all over the fucking place. I'm like, this shit looks cool. I don't know what the fuck this is, mm -hmm. but I guess... <laughs> <laughs> and then you start like piecing the music together with him like oh okay <laughs> now i see it and now it's like when you look at the page it's like that's essentially it's not it's not all vaporwave shit like we're gonna have a video where we actually like, go through and break down this shit mm -hmm. but it's definitely not in a box whatsoever like you can get on the page and you'll see a video of a fucking Michael Myers smoking in a hammock and you'll see another video of like some type of Inuyasha shit or another video of Looney Tunes or just whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. just the way in which the videos are mixed and the way that the music is too, you kind of get, you just, you get a lot of shit that you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis. So, I mean, the I guess my question would be to you, what um, what the what what what's a a good song to you? Like, is it genre based or is it more of a situation where it's like this can fit into many of things? Because if you talk about like pop music, some pop music, especially nowadays, can fit between like old pop and mm -hmm. like alternative. You got like pop music where it's like slightly hip hop pop type shit where you had like chance back in the day right so it's like what's uh what's a what's a good sound or a good song to you that like what what defines that so to me two things usually right like first it's the criteria of does this give me enough fucking dopamine mm. i i love it when like a song could give me dopamine because that means that song is automatically good because like you know you'll You'll see people like you show songs to and like they don't bop or anything. They might like it. Mm -hmm. They might like bop to it and shit, right? I don't I can't tell if they're like getting any dopamine from it, but if they are, right? And or like if you are, right? That's the first criteria. It's like, damn bro, I really love this. I wanna listen to this again because it's giving me a dopamine spike. Mm. You know, that's a huge, huge uh thing. Now a lot of songs can give you a dopamine spike, right? So, and a lot of songs are engineered in like these industry studios to give you dopamine sp spikes, you know? That's, mm. they got a formula for that. Trust me, they do. And, but my second criteria is does it sound different from everyone else? Not like as it on purpose, but is it your sound, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, um crystal castles right mm -hmm. i love crystal castles and like um uh, side note i fucking hate how like they've become tiktoky now yeah like uh, so many of those fucking tiktok songs like bro this shit was this shit was bumping bumping back in the early 2010s y'all don't even know y'all don't it's even so know it's so annoying yeah <laughs> Like those sped up TikTok song, fuck you guys. But, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, you know, like, you know, like they'll like basically, um, you know, like every one of their songs had dopamine spikes to it. And yeah. then like on top of it, right, that you could tell what a Crystal Castle song was when you first hear it. Yeah, as soon as know? it pops up. As soon as you pop up and you can associate that with them. Now, I'm not saying you can't evolutionize your sound, right? Or anything like that as an artist because you still will sound how you sound no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm not trying to shit on, like, any artist or anybody in the industry. But, like, I can't listen to 90% of, like, trap, you know, music that's, like, in rap caviar and shit nowadays. You know, yeah. like, 
I can't. It's all literally the same. And it's like, you know, like if you're listening to this, like, how is there any substance? Like, I, I don't understand, like, how everything sounds the same, you know? Like, back in the day, right? If you sound the same as someone else, you're biting someone, right? I know this old school, I sound like an old head or something, right? But it's like, <laughs> bro, bro, you're biting someone, you get fucking ripped for doing that, you yeah. know? You, you'll you'll get ripped like the fucking crab won't like you all types of shit like oh you just you know you're biting off of someone now it's like the, you have to bite off someone to be able to put yourself on yeah you know? originality is just such a it's, it's something where it's it's not it's not worth it honestly if you're trying to like do shit big yeah if you're trying to go mainstream don't don't be original to be honest with you that's that's a good one right like don't don't be original if you're trying to be mainstream but however right if you want to be original right nowadays and go with it right like i think that you will always find your audience you know when you market it yourself of course you know mm -hmm. like and you don't need like a million monthly See Spotify listeners, I don't, that shit don't do, do you no good, right? You could literally just have 10K and an all 10K just listens to your shit religiously, buys your merch, fucking buys CDs, buys USBs, buy whatever from you, right? Bro, you solid, you know? You solid for a good while, you know? Yeah, you're, start, you're starting to see that kind of be a thing too with um, how many concerts or not being like sold out to by some of these artists that oh that's huge, huge. Yeah. yeah i think like ice spice had some shit where she like she got a huge following in general but she can't sell out a concert though she don't have a huge following right she has a huge she has a huge number mm -hmm. but that number is empty this is what goes back to these record labels because she's part of a record label she's a plant we all know she's a plant right that goes back to them like fucking upping the numbers, you know, with their streaming farms, their bot farms, everything like that. There's not real people. I honestly don't believe she got a million followers. I don't, I ain't gonna cap. I really like, especially I, with us being in Chicago too, like you, you can hear, you can hear what's popular just by based off of what people are bumping in their car shit like ex that. Exactly. Never, yeah. I, I hear Sexy Red, but I don't hear, I don't be hearing Ice Spice. Even I think Sexy Red also has like trouble. Um, Selling out concerts. Because they're, too. bro, because it's because they're not real people, bro. Because they're like, <laughs> bro, like, 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 they're uh, not real. Uh, bro, like, they trying to like sell out the United Center for like these artists, right? Little they know that like about 90% of the streams are fake and only like 5,000 people actually listen to them, right? You can get 5,000 people to fucking show up in the United Center to like listen to them in Chicago? No, you know? And it's crazy too. It's like the UC is big, but it's not gargantuan and it's like the artists that do sell that bitch out those are top tier so it's like oh they have an audience yeah yeah like like chris brown if he goes to the united God, Center, that yeah. shit sold the fuck out kanye kendrick bro you you're already not, know outside of that like if you're not if you're not on that level then you're probably gonna struggle with that venue taylor swift selling out soldier like you yeah. know it's like that's going to happen they have actual fans bro like yeah. you know they have a following they built right it's also by the way right like those followings don't get like built overnight by the way right? no like, not at all like taylor swift has been in this shit since like 2007 2008 like fucking kanye's been in for who knows how long right, right? like you know all these artists that got actual fan bases right like, it took them decades to be able to sell Soldier and everything like that. Like, bro, like, Ice Spice just came into the game. Yeah. What gives her the right to tour and go on, go to the United Center? I remember when touring was like, I right, man, you on. you on, on, right? Like, yeah. oh shit, we five, six years in, five, six years in, you know? Now we have enough fans to tour. Now we have enough fans to show up to these shows and fuck with us and buy our merch and all this kind of shit, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, you going on tour, you can't even fill up the gas tank in your goddamn, you know, bus. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, you're not gonna be able to do that, you know? 
Like it's or like if you are gonna go on tour, downsize your tour. Don't go to so many cities. Don't go to like venues that you can't like put people in. All, bro, it's like insane. You know, like I Spice been in it for like two, three years. What gives you the right to go touring? It's just, it's just, yeah. it's so hard to even just to get a fan base that large and that's in such a short amount of time. And it's like, it's kind of like fast food versus like real food. Like fast food, you get that shit. Fucking, you pull up, put your order in, you get the shit. Mm-hmm. Real food take time. And it's like that's that's kind of like similar with your fan base. It's like your fan base, some of that shit. Like you might be able to get a, like somebody that's just hardcore on your shit after like one two tracks. Because even within that time frame, how much content have you made to kind of keep people in? You right. Know, like when you talk about somebody like Kanye, like you have fans of Kanye from when he first fucking started and just love everything. You have fans of Kanye that just started liking this shit when they you know like like a 20 year old now right you know like you just heard some of the, some of his most recent shit you know mm-hmm. and it's like but they can go back and listen to that older shit and be like oh mm-hmm. okay i see what's going on here mm-hmm. so it's like when you don't have even just enough content not enough music then you don't have that full backing you don't have that 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 thing that kind of have people to be able to just to anchor into exactly you know you just it's like kids kids love kendrick yeah but like oh like people are our age like fucking love kendrick oh, we we it's love different i love i love kendrick too it's just, yeah. it's just it's a different it's a different appreciation of the artist yeah you know but also it's like also the relatability like a lot of people can relate to kendrick as opposed to other artists too you yeah. know like you know i feel like that's what he got going for him as well yeah. you know it's like a lot of people can relate to kendrick and a lot of people can understand what he's saying and he's like actually because like no offense when I mean, he was trying to like do that beef with Drake. I, I, of course, there's going to be Drake stands everywhere, you know, and Drake has, like, bots <laughs> that's going to, like, bot up the comments and everything like that. And funny enough, like, when I was seeing the beef, right, it was, like, a back and forth, and, like, throughout the comments, it'd be like, this is a Drake bot. This is, really, <laughs> like, this is a Drake bot. Black like, in the man. comment, yeah, people just recognize that, you yeah. know, like a Drake stand bot, you know, and... Because they'll be like, oh, he won. And it's like, everybody know he didn't, you know? And then um, it'd, be, it'd be funny like that. But it's like people can't really relate to Drake as they could oppose to relating to Kendrick. That's why yeah, I yeah. felt like Kendrick had the advantage a little bit, you know? Because Drake be talking about, like, some some big boss shit, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so. But, yeah, no, like, in terms of, like, building the fan base, you know, and building everything around you, you know, it takes fucking decades, bro. Like, it takes decades. But once you get there, it stays there. It never goes away, you yeah. know? It never goes. That, uh, that's that 2 change shit. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? Like, bro, like, uh, what was it? Um... There's so many artists that it took 10 years of like putting shit out to get to the, where they're at. At least 10 years minimum if you're independent, bro. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking about a single every single month for 10 straight years. I'm talking about marketing it, you know, all this type of shit until they get put on, bro. Yeah. You know? Why are we? Why are we talking about? We supposed to be talking about fucking uh, <laughs> different music genres. And shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Because we went down a rabbit <laughs> this hole. Go, but this is yeah. gonna happen. This is yeah. gonna happen often. I go lie, but. Uh, <laughs> It, but no, nah, but just uh, to kind of just like wrap everything up, um, like I said, our main thing is, especially with this show, we want to be able to just talk about just, you know, the things that we come across, some of the thoughts that we have on stuff, um, any tips and tricks of the trade that we come up with or we, you know, we try on our own. And like I said, we're not a huge channel uh, on our own, you know, but we do have some information that I think would be beneficial to anybody, you know. So that is episode one of the Just Grow Show. Uh, please like, subscribe if uh, there's something that you're interested in so we know to make more stuff like this. And uh, so you got anything, man? No, but uh, first of many, you know, keep coming back, like, subscribe, comment, you know, uh, just, you know, tell us what you think or anything like that or don't think. I don't really give a fuck, but um you can be critical. It's all right, everyone. You can be critical, but just don't be anonymous. 
<laughs> if you if you're gonna leave a hate you better comment, log in, motherfucker. <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna leave a hate comment, at least let me show your show your face, or at least fucking have a video up because so that way I can roast your ass up here. So, all right. but it's all good. Yeah, it's like <laughs> subscribe, comment. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll see y'all. All right. So you can so you got so aggressive. <laughs> he did. Bro. He's just like, hey, just let me know who. Uh,